Have you ever wondered where Cain's wife came from in the book of Genesis? This is one of the most common questions people have about the Bible. Some skeptics even try to use this to claim the Bible has contradictions or errors. Well, today, we are going to tackle this topic head-on and illuminate the answers from Scripture. We all know the familiar story. Cain murdered his younger brother Abel in a fit of jealousy and anger. As punishment, God banished him from the land, and Cain worries that he will be killed by anyone who finds him. But here is where it got interesting. Just a few verses later down the line, Genesis 4 verse 17, simply stated that Cain had relations with his wife, and they had a son named Enoch. But where did this wife come from? The story just jumps right into Cain having a wife without any explanation. Up until now, the only mentioned people were Adam, Eve, Cain, and Abel. The Bible provided no explicit details about her identity or background. Because of this, many skeptics claim it's a mistake. We're going to thoroughly examine this question and show how the perceived problem completely disappears when we consider the context. We'll discover that there are absolutely no grounds to doubt the historicity of Genesis based on the question of Cain's wife. To begin, let's lay some logical groundwork and review what Scripture reveals about the timeline up to this point. Based on the genealogies and ages given, it seems Adam and Eve were created roughly 6,000 years ago. Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born and lived another 800 years after this, fathering more children during this time. With such long lifespans, there would have been plenty of time for Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, Seth, and their descendants to multiply rapidly into large families, even if each couple only had a few children. With an initial long lifespan, zero health problems, and God's command to be fruitful and multiply, it's very logical to deduce the early generations of Genesis could have expanded to a population of many thousands within just a few centuries. We're not talking about a couple of isolated people wandering in the wilderness. There is no reason to doubt Adam and Eve had many, many children over their long lives beyond just Cain, Abel, and Seth. According to Genesis 5 verse 4, the Bible says, After Seth was born, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. So, where am I going with this? Well, it sets the stage to explain where Cain's wife came from. If you have large extended families of aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, and dozens of siblings, it opens up all kinds of possibilities for who Cain could have married. Clearly, she would have been a descendant of Adam and Eve, born to one of their many other children. She likely would have been Cain's sister, niece, or other close relation. While this may seem strange to us today, it would not have been at all uncommon or controversial in Cain's day, because first, God had not yet forbidden interfamily marriage. The commands against this in places like Leviticus 18 came thousands of years later, after many more humans were populating the earth. So at the dawn of creation, it was not yet considered incest for siblings or close relatives to marry and have children. It was required to fill and subdue the earth. So it is quite plausible that Cain took one of his younger sisters as a wife. Yes, marrying a sister grates against our moral sensibilities today, but it was not yet forbidden in that era, especially given their unique role as the first couple and the need to populate humanity. This view handles the reality that no other sisters are mentioned for Cain to marry. They simply hadn't been born yet at the brief point this account focuses on. By the time Genesis 4 ends and Genesis 5 picks up years later, other children had been added. We must keep in mind the purpose and context of Genesis. Details that were not essential to the core story may have been omitted. Genesis was focused on giving a broad overview of early human history and development, not an exhaustive list of every single person. What matters here is that Cain disobeyed God, murdered his brother, and went off to build a new civilization apart from the Lord and his parents. The specific details of who Cain married are secondary to the message being communicated. The general context of Genesis and the weight of scriptural evidence point to Cain's wife likely being his sister. This fits the Genesis account we have without forcing meanings not obvious from the text. Secondly, health and genetic concerns from intermarriage did not exist yet since the human genome was still relatively pure at creation, untainted by mutations. Beyond Cain's specific example, the pattern of close intermarriage continued for generations after the fall, with no negative comment from Scripture. For example, Abraham married his half-sister Sarah, and God blessed their union, Genesis 20, verse 12. Isaac married Rebekah, who was his first cousin. Jacob took as wives two first cousins, Leah and Rachel. From a genetic standpoint, 
This close intermarriage between siblings or cousins at that time was harmless and even necessary to rapidly grow the small initial population. Mutations corrupting the human genome took many, many generations to accumulate. When God instituted laws against incest in Leviticus 18, it was at a time centuries later when such relations were no longer needed or beneficial for the multiplication of humanity. When we understand Genesis in its proper ancient context, the questions about Cain's wife disappear. Assuming the details we've covered so far, let's go over the key reasons we can trust Genesis contains accurate history. Firstly, Genesis reads as a straightforward history. The language, grammar, and style match the other historical accounts found in the Pentateuch. The early chapters show no signs of being written as myth, allegory, or legend. They clearly present real people and events. Secondly, the rest of the Bible affirms the details in Genesis as historically true. Genesis is cited throughout the Old Testament as a reliable history. In the New Testament, Jesus quotes Genesis and confirms it is true. The New Testament authors present Adam and Eve as real historical people who are ancestors of us all. Thirdly, if we dismiss Genesis as mythical fiction, we undermine all of Scripture. The introductions of sin, death, the first prophecy of Christ, Sabbath-keeping and more lose their foundation. No sound doctrine remains with a mythical Genesis. Lastly, Genesis provides the only logical basis for the origin of nations, languages, technology, agriculture and civilization. Only the details in these early biblical chapters can account for how humanity rapidly arose from seemingly nothing. Without taking Genesis as authentic history, we simply have no plausible origins explanation at all. The big picture is that all of humanity descended from the same original parents, Adam and Eve. Jesus affirms this when he declares marriages between one man and one woman in Matthew 19 verses 4 to 6 and refers to humans as male and female from the beginning of creation. Paul preaches that all races of mankind come from the same original parents in Acts 17.26. While we may not know every detail about how this unfolded across history, the Genesis narrative traces all human beings back to the same source. Rather than stumbling over questions like Cain's wife, let us build our lives on the firm foundation of God's Word. Scripture can be trusted. My hope is this video has helped give you the confidence to take the early chapters of Genesis at face value. This supposed contradiction disappears with only a little context and logic. The Bible does not leave us totally in the dark about where Cain got his wife. When we step back and look at the whole counsel of Scripture, the idea that God created one original pair, Adam and Eve, and that all other humans descended from them, allows for where Cain's wife came from without conflict or inconsistency. I hope this exploration has helped shed some light on this fascinating biblical mystery. So there you have it. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.